Good evening, everyone. How are you? Hello, can you hear me, guys? Me escuchan. Can you hear me, guys? Me pueden oír. Yes, teacher. Oh, thank you. Why is nobody telling me? Porque no, nadie me contesta. <laughs> Gracias por contestar. All right. Okay. One minute, guys. We're going to start in a moment. I'm just going to load the background. Solo voy a cargar mi fondo de pantalla. Maravilloso. Okay. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Happy Wednesday. Did you hear the news, guys, about the September 16th? Have you heard the news? In the house. Yes, teacher. <laughs> it's okay. day off. Yes, teacher. Yes, we will have, well, you will have the 16th off. <laughs> I have no the data. The 16th. <laughs> you will have the 15th and the 16th off. Yeah. Oh my God, does that mean we're not going to have classes on Friday? It means we're not having classes on Friday, probably, right? Maybe, maybe no. <laughs> we don't know. Well, I guess they will let us know tomorrow morning, probably. But if we don't have classes, my suggestion so that we don't stay here until the end of December in classes, <laughs> I would suggest if we can have classes on a Saturday to cover the, the, the next class is going to be on on, on Monday, <laughs> Monday, Monday. <laughs> hey, have you guys thought about um, about having the classes? For example, we were gonna lose tomorrow, right? Just tomorrow, supposedly. Have you thought that maybe we could have that, we can recover that class on a Saturday so that we don't have to go until another Monday at the end of the course? Have you thought about that? How would you feel about it, guys? It's difficult in the weekends, teacher. It's difficult. Yes, because we have a lot of... I would think it would be at the same time from 8 to 10, or we can do like one hour, one Saturday, one hour, another Saturday. It's just an option, right? It's just for you to discuss it and think about it. <laughs> because if we have these two days off, we will be finishing until October... 11th October 11th right that's true look at you Jorge. <laughs> hydrating yourself <laughs> I want to see you participating <laughs> I'm very informate <laughs> <laughs> yeah so on the 11th ideally the course was supposed to finish on September on October 7th Friday right we were going to run it until next Monday, the 10th, mm -hmm. but now apparently it's going to go, good evening, Wendy. Apparently now it's going to go all the way till Tuesday, right? The 11th. Okay. I think, sure. I think I won't be here in the, in the country by that time, by the 11th. So if you want to consider Saturday, then you can cover those classes on Saturday. <laughs> if you don't want to have another teacher, those two days, right? Don't but, worry about that, teacher. You can <laughs> everything again Saturday. <laughs> Wendy, Maribel, please. We, we are going to meet you, teacher. <laughs> I can see. I can see that. <laughs> Wendy, tell me. Yes, I help in the in the homework. To 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 hmm, to do it. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, is that a was that a question, Wanda? Mm. Ah, bueno, en español porque no. Okay. La cosa es que no no me sale la la. O sea, no. Yo pensé que se resolvía de una forma, pero no me salen las respuestas. No sé. Y me parece Which... que ayer estaba hablando usted de algo de eso o no sé de cuál. Which exercise? Which exercise? What was that? El dos, 
2.2 creo que es, o el 2.1 pero es siempre de los ¿cómo se llama esto? el speech uh -huh. pero no sé, usando tell supuestamente usando tell pero ya probé poniendo tell poder, poniendo nada más el tell normal como dice ahí y nada, me sale 2.2 no, es the one that we saw yes is that the one we saw yesterday guys? yes, teacher ok Wendy, maybe you can check with your um in the in the WhatsApp group if someone took the image yesterday, so they can pass it to you for those ones. Mm -hmm. If someone took it, if you could do the favor and send it to Wendy, please, on WhatsApp, on the group. Oh, okay. no había visto la el WhatsApp, o sea, cuando estaba en la reunión no había visto el WhatsApp. No, it's not there. But if someone has it, does any of you has it, guys? Does any of you have it? What I showed you yesterday? If you guys don't have it, I, we can check it again at the end of the class, Wendy, okay? okay? We can see it one more time at the end of the class. Okay. All right, so tonight we're going to start with room number two that we have pending from yesterday. Room number two, we have Carlos Antonio, Jose Jonathan, and Maria Elena that we're missing. Let's see. How many participants do we have? Let me check. Carlos Antonio, I see him. Jose Jonathan, be here. Present. Thank you, Carlos. Um, your classmates are not here yet. So, Maria Elena, yes, is here. Do you want to do the presentation with Maria Elena from the, the one we had pending from yesterday? Yes, teacher, but I'm driving. Oh. Oh, that's, a, that's a big detail. <laughs> Let's check with room number four. Room number, yeah, be careful, Maria. Room number four, Manuel Antonio Palma and Tatiana Michel. You were pending from yesterday, right? Manuel, are you here? I don't see Manuel anymore. Yes, teacher, we did it like, uh, yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yes, they, they don't. <laughs> What about Jorge Humberto and Juan de Dios? Did you guys do your presentation yesterday? Uh, we have we are, we we are pending. Presentation, but Yay! Today is the day. <laughs> today is the day. Your moment has come. <laughs> uh, okay. The moment. So we will start with Jorge and with Juan. Oh, okay. And let that, me, we give let, time to the others. Let me share the, my, my screen. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we are uh, JJ Computer Consultors. We are uh, entrepreneurs. And this is our entrepreneurship. The logo, I, I don't remember if the word is logo. Mm -hmm. the, the trademark. The trademark is the difference is here. The difference or the difference? Difference. Mm -hmm. With with an S. C C E. The the T and then C E. C. Mm -hmm. Erase the T. Uh-huh. And then add C as in C tab, C E. e. Mm -hmm. e. That's I. E. 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 As in echo. No. E. E as in echo. E as in elephant. Huh? E. e as in echo. E. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And um, uh, like part of the of the exercise, we put some advice to the clients that can help to the to the people who know about what what we do and uh, initially initial working capital uh -huh. create your own business plan market study customer target and that that uh, are advice that we we can recommend to people can use to 
use our service. All right. Um, now I, I, I think Juan de Dios would be complete the, the presentation. Okay. Okay. Uh, we recommend it to to share a competitive price because uh, in the world uh, we have a lot of uh, competitor competitors competitors and brands that have a promoting their technologies and computers computers cell phones uh, tablets and another uh, device that that have made have made easy the life in our home or or in our uh, work All right very good uh, job mm -hmm. for for hours uh, the difference is here with jng computer consultors very good good opening good ending <laughs> good job developing very good guys you were giving tips as well you used the word some of the vocabulary vocabulary that we saw yesterday so that was pretty good congrats good job you, nice let's go Thank you, teacher. very good we have um Ana Raquel Villalta, Cristian Arazo, and Mario Villeda pending. Are you guys here? Así, Ana Raquel. Let me only see. I. Yeah, only, only you show. I. Oh my God, where are your classmates? <laughs> Cristian mm -hmm. and Mario, they are not here yet. Okay, we will leave them for the end of the class, probably. Maria, it's a still driving. Maria, are you still driving? <laughs> But we have Carlos Antonio and Jose Jonathan de Gil. Carlos and Jose Jonathan, do you want to do the presentation without Maria because she's driving right now? Yes, Miss. I have okay. the presentation. Okay. No, no sé si Carlos estaba de ayer de oyente. No sé si está presente. Yeah, he's there. Carlos, do you want to participate with Jose Jonathan? Carlos, okay. You? <laughs> if you want to go ahead, Jose, we, okay. we um, can save Maria's score. <laughs> I am stopped in a moment. Don't worry, yeah. Maria. Be careful. <laughs> <It'll work. laughs> you sure, Maria? Yes. I arrived to Texaco. <laughs> okay. Um, tips for a startup and entrepreneur. Uh, the first, um, develop a business plan. A business business plan materializes your ideas into paper and helps you to envision how your business will be operate. It a uh, respond question um, like. What is your product or service? What are your priorities? Uh, where will you be operating your business? Where do you want to be in five years? For example, um, next, uh, Maria Elena. Yes. Um, free marketing, take advantage of free marketing tools. Some free marketing tools such as a Google, my business, and social media can be used for marketing and promotion. Many business create Facebook peer groups to spread the word and interact with like minded people. Um, next, um... Don't be afraid of networking. Don't be afraid to say help. 
most of you have contacts who can contribute to your success. You could also start with linking it, which was meant for business networking in this first place. Next. Find a mentor. Having a mentor you can trust is a value asset. Uh, whether you in a mastermind group or have stayed in touch with your former teacher or other business associated, guidance is always value. Work with someone who was clipped. Um, that very mountain you are trying to navigate to shorten your learning curve. Okay, only thank you. Thank you. Very good job. Thank you for thank the you. for the effort, Maria and Jose. Good job. The presentation <laughs> was really nice. You stole my ideas for the vocabulary we're gonna do tonight, but okay. <laughs> That's not a problem. We will develop it anyway. So thank you everyone for participating. I think we're not missing. Oh yeah, we're just missing one group, but we're gonna wait for another kids partners to come into the class. Hopefully they come into the class. That's a different story. Anna. <laughs> so don't worry, okay? Um, now let's see, we're gonna go to the student's manual right now. And let me check. I'm gonna show the screen with you guys. And we're gonna go to page 19. All right. So we're gonna be talking about e-shopping. Yesterday we were still talking about entrepreneurship and that, but now we're gonna talk about consuming, which is e-shopping. All right. We're gonna talk about the pros, the cons um advantages disadvantages etc right so we're gonna start this topic with a conversation um i need someone to help me read uh what's in num exercise number one please the two questions that we have there i need a volunteer to help me read those please let's see we'll read yes please exercise oh. number one Exercise number one. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry, Nobel. How often do you buy products online? How expensive are shipping costs in your country? All right, thank you, Wendy. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to go to the breakout rooms right now. I'm going to give you guys five minutes to talk about this with your classmates. Um, this is not like the question we did on Monday. On Monday, we were asking when was the last time that you bought something online? But now we're going to check how often do you do that? How often do you buy online? And buying online can be anything from ordering something on Siman.com or superselectors.com or ordering things on the stores on Instagram or by WhatsApp, right? There are many stores that you can order by WhatsApp these days. So anything of those channels are considered online shopping, right? So how often do you consider that you buy products online and how expensive are shipping costs here in El Salvador, okay? So you're gonna be discussing those two questions in the breakout rooms. I'm gonna give you five to six minutes. And then when we come back to the main session, we will hear your answers, okay? So I'm gonna give you, it should be two participants per room, ideally, two to three per room. The rooms are open right now and you will have five minutes to discuss those two questions. You can en enter the rooms now.
Tatiana, are you going to be able to join the room?
Okay, and we are back. So I wanna hear your answers. What were you talking about with your classmates, okay? And if possible, if you want to, you can use reported speech to tell me what your other classmate told you, right? So let's hear room number one. We had Juan de Dios, Olga, and Wendy Maribel in room number one. So let me hear what the other person said, guys. You can go ahead. Okay, teacher. Wendy said that she to buy in Facebook and, and Instagram. And we and she said the cost uh, for delivery uh, maybe two or five dollars. Okay. Depend the the sum of country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Olga say uh, she buy in Instagram, Facebook, and marketplace. Okay. It's a new it's a new platform for me. Mm -hmm. Marketplace. Okay. <laughs> and, and Olga say uh, the delivery. Uh, Two at five dollars. Two to five dollars, okay. And he, uh, one the deals, say similar price and similar uh, platform for buy products. All right, very good. Thank you. Is one the deals going to participate? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the the shipping cost it depends if you are uh, sending product uh, inside in in the country or international shipping is more um, is more uh, more expensive because uh, we have uh, the product has have to uh, have to have to to be in 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 a ship from another country the the merchandise or good for uh, companies is around uh, one thousand or two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the cheapest one. The cheapest one around one thousand to two thousand. It can go yes, higher. It, it higher. is very expensive mm -hmm. uh, right now for the war in Russia and Ukraine. The shipping are more expensive. Yeah, that is correct. Very good point. Thank you. Room number one. All of you, you three participated. You were very fluent and you used the grammar correctly. So nice job, room number one. Thank you. Let's go with room number two right now. Thank you, guys. Room number two, Claudia Melendez, Jorge Humberto, and Maria Elena, please. Teacher, uh, I, I think we don't understand the exercise, but uh, I, I hear that the classmate shared with us, and in my opinion, I... Well, uh, I hear oh, Maria said he's driving. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> she said that. Uh -huh. Just for... for uh, Practice the, speed, the reported speech. <laughs> uh, I, good one. It's a good one, yeah. And, and about the, the buy uh, online, I, I like to buy uh, in, uh, through eBay. Okay. Um, I, I, I like to buy online because it's, I, I think it's, it's easier. Mm -hmm. And you, you receive the product in your, in your house. 
Really? When you buy it on eBay? Uh, yes, because I I bought I I bought the the product mm -hmm. to the direction mm -hmm. or to the address that a company that then they have the delivery. Oh, I see. They, they receive the product, then uh, they deliver the product to, to my house. You use the third party, okay? Yes. Nice. Very good. Let's see, Claudia is driving. No, Maria Elena is driving. Claudia, please. <laughs> okay. Um, I buy products online very often too, because I buy in AliExpress. Nice, and, uh, <laughs> the shipping are not sometimes or the most of the times are cheaper are cheap and you, it depends the the store how much do you consider cheap claudia because cheap for uh, me can be cheap can be expensive for someone else <laughs> two dollars is the most that i pay for a shipment from but china in a store, to they, you pay 20 30 bucks depends that product i think Oh, all right. And that's from China to El Salvador, Claudia? Yes, China to El Salvador. How long but does it, it take time anymore? to come? Uh, yeah, that's what... With the pandemic, three. it takes three, four months. Three to four months now. Yes. I would go crazy if I don't but have But it's worth case. it. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when, you re when they don't... Um, somebody was telling a story yesterday that her friend ordered something online. And it never arrived, so she reported it, and they sent it another one. And at the end, both packages arrived. It's just that they yeah, took a lot. I have very, very <laughs> things that I said. It's safe that website to to buy. Claudia? Yes, they return your. They have a very, um, very good return policy. <laughs> nice. They return your money if you don't get the product. You have the time. You can. Uh, yeah, ask the money if they don't take your package or something. That's interesting. Nice. Okay. Room number two, thanks for your participation, Jorge and Claudia. Let's go with room number three. We have Diana, Elizabeth, Jose, Jonathan, and Nelson. Let's escuchamos. Hello, good evening. Hi. In the case, um, Diana, she says uh, something buys groceries, uh, food, and on store website like Wendy's. Um, Nelson, he say that he bought in pharmacies. Um, but say it's um, cheap to buy online. Okay. Yes, we talk a lot about food. <laughs> uh, we. We order a lot in some kind of apps like Pedidos Ya, Uber, and Ugo, uh, different kind of food. But we agree <laughs> that in the case of more expensive that Pedidos Ya. All right. Okay. Um, is somebody planning to participate from your group? Is somebody missing from participating in your group? Nelson. Okay, uh, but he stood up right now, so we're gonna wait for him. Ah, there he comes. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Nelson. Hello. Hi. Okay. Okay. What then do you buy product online on expensive or cheap cost in your country? Mm -hmm. uh, to to dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, to dollar. Two dollars uh, to three dollars. Okay. It depends in the in the plaza. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, oh. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you, room number three. Thank you, Nelson, Jose, and Diana. Thanks for your participation. We're going to go with room number six. We have Ana Raquel, Juan Carlos Rivas, and Silvia Suleima, please. Yes. Um, how often do you buy products online? Uh, I buy uh, products online uh, approximately every two months. Um, I usually buy cosmetics, uh, medicine, um, food, um, Informa value, pollo con pero. Um, <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah. I uh, do <laughs> in my group it, uh, was Silvia. Uh, Silvia uh -huh. said, uh, I rarely buy online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good job reported speech right there. Okay. That was direct speech, actually, but that was good. Uh, Silvia, please. Uh, I don't listen to my coworker, but uh, I, in um, personality, I buy it rarely, but uh, with when there is promotion special. Okay, um, when there is special sales. All right, thank you. Um, so I'm assuming Juan Carlos didn't participate. Yes, teacher. I oh, buy okay. uh, rarely. Okay. Uh, in that time, in the time or the basis, the time. Mm -hmm. The times. Uh -huh. The times to buy the boat is was in the Almacen Simán. Okay. In Pisa Nova. All right. Well, yeah, were those like good experiences? That. And I like that uh, form uh, online is very easy, mm -hmm. uh, quickly, and security. Safe. Safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much, group number six, Ana, Silvia, and Juan Carlos. Very good job. So now we're going to read this conversation we have on the screen. And well, the instructions. Alan is reporting some questions a customer who's visiting their website is asking, all right? We're gonna read the conversation to find out the answers that Maria suggests, right? Um, as it says, we're gonna take turns practicing the conversation. This means that, um, we this is between two people, Alan and Maria. So we're gonna need two volunteers, one for Alan and one for Maria. And we're gonna read this conversation three times so if you didn't participate the first round, you can try on the second or you can try on the third, okay? So for this one, who's me? Wendy. Okay, Wendy, you can read Maria and Jorge, you will read Alan in this round, please. Okay. okay. Uh, there's these customers in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What would the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free. And then this same person posed a different question. They asked whether the pillow were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China. And please post a link in the cost in the comment to the return poli policy policy document. Policy. 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 Uh -huh. Sorry. Policy document. Very good. Thank you, Jorge and Wendy. All right, we're going for round number two. We're reading the same conversation. We need two more people to read, please. So let's see, raise your hand so we can assign it to you. Juan de Dios, you will read Alan and Tatiana Michel, you will read Maria. Diana, you will read Maria on the third round, okay? So stay there. 
Let's go. Juan and Tatiana, please. There is this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What would the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free. And then this same person posted a different question. They asked whether the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return policy. Let the customer know that international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China. And please post a link in the comments to the return uh, pol policy, policy mm -hmm. document. Very good. Thank you, Tatiana and Juan. And now we're going for round number three. I just need one more volunteer to read Alan, please. Diana is going to read Maria. I need one more person to read Alan in the, in the third round. Let's see. I need one more person to read Alan. Ana Raquel, please. Read Alan and Diana, you can read Maria. Yeah, okay. There is this customer in the online store asking a lot of questions about the decorative pillows. What will the customer like to know about the product? Well, the customer asked if the shipping was for free, and then the same person posed a different question. They asked whether the pillows were made in China or America. And finally, the customer asked if we have a return policy. Let the customers know the international shipping has an extra cost and tell them the pillows were made in China. And please post a link in the comments to the return policy document. Very good, ladies, thank you. <laughs> good job. Okay, all the six people that participated were very fluent. So nice job with that. Also, pronunciation was pretty much on point. Just this word policy, right? <laughs> Politica de, de retorno return policy, right? Other than that, everybody did a good job on pronunciation as well. Now, you're going to rewrite these sentences, right? These questions that we have in here, you're going to rewrite them as they are shown in the conversation, okay? It's not that you're going to find how to do it or learn, no. They are already in the conversation, you're just going to re rewrite them. For example, number one, is the shipping for free? How would you rewrite it, guys? Uh, tell them. No. no. Shipping has an extra an cost. Extra cost. Uh -huh. But you're not going to answer. You're going to rewrite the questions. They are already in the paragraph. So you're just going to read me what, what you see in black. In highlighted in black in the paragraph. Is the shipping for free? ¿Cuál sería el equivalente según el paragraph? The same question. The customer asks if mm -hmm. the shipping if was the shipping for, free. for free. Yes, the customer asked if the shipping was for free. Exactly. Notice the exercise is only telling you to rewrite this one in the same as shown in the conversation. So they are already here, okay? So you're just going to read them, basically. Let's go with number two. Are the pillows made in China or America? They ask whether the pillows were made in China or America. Very good. And number three, do you have a return policy? The customer asking if we have a return policy. Very good. Okay, we're gonna watch a video right now. Let me just load it for you guys. One minute. I'm gonna load the video first. And this is the one I think. 
Okay, so what we're going to do right now for this video, we're only gonna first, we're just gonna, it's 22 minutes. We're not gonna watch it for 22 minutes, don't worry. <laughs> we're just gonna watch it for a few minutes, okay? And then we're going to discuss what we gathered, okay? We're gonna discuss what you gather from the video in the first five minutes. We're gonna listen to five or six minute steps, okay? And then we're gonna go with conversation about it. Oh, wait a minute. This is not the video. This I, is for I was not sharing the audio also. <laughs> <laughs> and I was waiting for you guys to tell me about it too. <laughs> Thank you, Jorge. You were the only one to tell me. <laughs> Give me one moment, guys. I'm going to. I think just to read the, the video. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, surprise. You're going to read the captions. Give me one moment. I think it this was. One... Pass. And that was a quick video. <laughs> Give me one minute. This this thing is loading, guys. That that was not the video that we were supposed to see. Actually, it's a conversation that I have to show you guys. Let me check it here. It's a reading exercise. It's not the video that I was going to show. Because the video that says there and the plot in the book, it's not available. So we're going to read this part. Okay. Five pitfalls of online shopping. Ooh, why is my phone listening? So five pitfalls of online shopping is the reading. Is everybody seeing the screen now? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Okay. Um, listen, since these ones are, we have one, we have one, two, three, four. Five. I'm gonna need like five or six people to help me read this, okay? It's gonna be one paragraph for each person. The first one is going to read this one. First person is going to read the introduction paragraph. And then the second person will read this shipping piece. And we have that's two people, three, four, five, six. Seven, so I need seven people total. So I need seven hands, seven volunteers to read, please. Each of you is going to read one paragraph. All you're going to do right now is read, but also try to um, use comprehension because we're going to talk about it later, right? So Jorge, you're going to help me with the introduction paragraph, please. This one. Okay. Then Wendy, you're going to help me with the paragraph that says shipping piece, okay? And I need five more volunteers, please. Tatiana, you will help me with paragraph number one, inaccurate sizing. Juan de Dios, help me with number two, misleading product des descriptions, please. Diana and Elizabeth, you will have paragraph number three, payment issues. And then Olga Gomez, help me with paragraph number four, poor packaging. And the bottom line, um, let's see. The bottom line, Silvia Suleima, please. The bottom line. Okay. So let's begin, Jorge, please. Here. Okay, teacher. Uh, online shopping is convenient, quick, and embraced by most every kind of connect so consumer. While it is well known for the benefits, few are aware of the darker side of purchasing from a virtual store. Get the facts behind shopping with the click of a mouse and use them to decide if your next purchase will be better made in person. Shopping from the comfort of your coach has major benefits and some unpleasant side effects. Check out shopping online, companies, bargains, and a few scams. Very good, thanks, Jorge. Okay, 
This word, we say it convenient. Convenient. Mm -hmm. How convenient. Yes, shopping online is convenient. Yes. Other than that, all the words were well pronounced, but it has a very good job. Let's go on oh, this one. We say couch. Sounds like an A. Ka, couch. Mm -hmm. couch. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we go with shipping fees. When did please? Okay. With the cost of full, all being an ever increasing consideration, it may be easy to assume that, that having your purchase shipped to your door is both efficient and affordable. Pay close attention to that final shipping fee. However, some stores charge the same price for all packages, making light or tiny handles a bad buy. Will, will, while, while other chains as a separate fee for each item cheaper. Even worse, many retailers punish their most loyal shoppers by charging more for every dollar spent, making that expensive buy. No, but daily, daily gift Pressure that necessary. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, we're gonna check a little bit of vocabulary, Wendy. Okay. Um, let's see. Where was I? This one is retailers. Okay. Retailers. Retailer. Yes. Re yeah. Yes. And then assume. Assume. Mm -hmm. Assume. Affordable. Affordable. Mm -hmm. Efficient. Efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bundles. Bundles. Yeah, Casaria, tiny bundles. Tiny, tiny bundles. bundles. Mm -hmm. Correct. Very good. Thank you, Wendy. Let's go with number one inaccurate sizing, please. Inaccurate sizing. Most women now their dress size, but are also aware aware that variations can occur. With the fickle nature of USA catalog size, one brand may fit through to size while others can run small. Perfect, the best way to assure that your online purchase will be a perfect fit is to research, research the return pol policy. 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 policy to see if returns are free or can be done via, via your closet brick and mortar location. If not, if it may be wise to see about trying items on before you buy. If you must be a virtual shopper, check any comments or feedback, let the others who have purchased similar items. They often share information about uh, whether a brand runs through to site. Read on 10 ways to budget when you're broke. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. So let's check. The only one that I was, this one, uh, Athena. It's not, not sure, it's nature. Nature instead of natural nature. nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then this one that you forgot policy, right? <laughs> policy. I don't know why, but I relate that word with uh, with po police or police. No, I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> same was happening. Someone was saying pol police and it's police. police. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's because it's very too. similar. 
Yes. Okay. And then we have this word in here that you see, um, brick and mortar. Okay. You pronounce it correctly. I'm just going to check for you guys in the dictionary.com, the definition for brick and mortar. mortar. It says this word, this expression is used to denote a business that operates conventionally rather than as over the internet. So basically brick and mortar is a physical store, okay? According to the dictionary, brick and mortar, it's a building or a business that operates conventionally, but not online. So basically it's a physical store. When you hear this word brick and mortar, it means a physical store, okay? Good, so let's go with number two. Everybody else that is not reading, Keep using your comprehension and pay attention to what your classmates are reading so you can comment on what this paragraph is talking about after everyone is done reading. Number two, please. Misleading product descriptions. One of the benefits of shopping online is that it, it is a totally visual experience. If a product looks appealing on your computer screen, it may very well look super in a real life. Unfortunately, the pictures and description that accompany a product page can be confusing or even completely fraudulent. The more trusted the shopping site, the less risk you will have of ordering based on a ambiguous forum or, or depiction. Stick to sites you know. And if the image and narrative don't give, don't buy. For many, for many online banking has become a day to day road time. Still, there are some hardot who refuse to accept the method. Check out, check out online banks, lower costs, and little sacrifice. Very good. Thank you. Okay, on this one, misleading. Tell me, please. <laughs> misleading. No, it's just it's, yeah, misleading. Yes. Okay. Misleading. misleading. Mm -hmm. And then this one, it's unfortunately. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. A company. A company. And then I think that's it. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Just don't forget, right? This one, ambiguous. misleading. Ambiguous. 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 This one, ambiguous. ambiguous. Yeah, this one you said, I think you said it correctly, right? You said ambiguous, right? Okay. That's what I heard. But yeah, that's the correct one. Then we have uh, depiction. You said it correctly, so no correction there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in road time. Routine. Routine. That's the one I was missing. Routine. Routine. Day mm -hmm. routine. Yeah. Day to day routine or daily routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some hold out is correct. Hold out. Hold out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold out. Other than that, very good job. Thank and you. we're going with number three, please. I don't know if that's my teacher. I, I think forget. it is. <laughs> Okay, payment issues. Having an inadequate credit line might seem like all the dis discerning shopper needs to finalize and buy purchases. In some regret, oh, I don't know how to say that. Regrettable. Regrettable instances. However, customers have been met at the final stage of their purchases with slow loading pages, error messages or no indication that their order went through, leaving them to wonder if their purchases have been made, even made. Man, many websites instruct shoppers to avoid hiding the payment button twice, since this could leave the customers with a duplicate order and double the bill. 
Be aware of how the payment page works before you hit submit. Uh, sorry. And if a retailer won't allow a final review of your order before you buy, it might be best to walk away. Very good. Okay, so let's check pronunciation here. Um, stages. Let's check. This one is stages. Repeat it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I, I heard this one. Oh, this one. It's not hiding, it's hitting. Hitting. Okay. Uh -huh. Button. Bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, button, button. Like that, like button. Yes. Button. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then I would think that that was the only thing. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go with number four, please. For packaging, some sites are now for their excellence in packaging. Amazon, Amazon for example, has even been criticized, criticized? criticized for its overseas. Mm -hmm. Reportedly, wasteful. Wasteful. Wait for packaging using packaging. more packaging use using more bubble wrap in your box and packing tape for its package than many of its competitors. On the other side of the spectrum resize retailers who skip in this category, leaving a wake of frustrated shopper who open their online purchases to find broken and damaged it, items. 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 Even I those. This one is items. Items. Mm -hmm. And those who have a good track record of making sure their shipments are secure can escape the casual this mm -hmm. that can be caused be by a careless order fulfill, fulfillment employee or the hasty delivery driver. The only way to be absolute, absolute, absolutely, absolutely certain that your purchase will get to you safe and sound is to pick it, pick it up fro, from the store yourself. Very good, thank you, Olga. Okay, we're gonna repeat pr pronunciation, okay? Uh, criticized. Criticized. Overzealous. Overzealous. Wasteful. Wasteful. Mm -hmm. And then, this one was correct, reside. Mm -hmm. Reside. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, other than that, it was correct. Just for you, for vocabulary, hasty means apresurado o apresurada, right? Hasty, apresurado o apresurada. For you guys, no. And this one, safe and sound, means sano y salvo. Safe and sound is an expression in English, meaning sano y salvo. Safe mm -hmm. and sound. I think there is a song that's called Safe and Sound. Like that song, yes. Mm -hmm, exactly. So it means sano y salvo. All right. And the last but not least, Sylvia, please. The put online. Buying online can be a gamble. So it is always best to allow for a little wiggle. Wiggle? Run with wiggle? Wiggle. Wrong. Wiggle. Wiggle. Mm -hmm. Wiggle. <laughs> okay. Wiggle. Uh -huh. Wiggle. <laughs> mm -hmm. with your purchase. If you need a gift for an event coming event. up within event coming out up within a day or two after your order is scheduled to arrive, you may not have time to rectify uses and get a replacement in time. Still shopping via 
they will come be a money saving endeavor endeavor provide your passion wise and up for the challenge don't get taken for a ride learn the pros and cons before the sales person makes a pitch see car shopping new or use it find uh, find out what happened in financial news this week real water cooler finance yeah that part's not included <laughs> ah, okay. yeah it was only the part <laughs> okay so let's go let's check voc uh, vocabulary pronunciation sylvia go with me please we say um wiggle Let's repeat it. Mm -hmm. We go. We go. We go. Wiggle. Uh -huh. Wiggle. Uh -huh. Correct. Like that. And then we have purchase. Purchase. Yes. Schedule. A schedule. Uh -huh. Replacement. Replacement. Uh -huh. Endeavor. Endeavor. Yes. Challenges. challenges mm -hmm. other than that very good now this expression guys that you see here provided you are patient this means suponiendo que usted sea paciente right provided you are patient whenever you see this expression provided that or provided something you can use it also in conversations when you want to say for example um i have a surprise for you you will be very happy Provided that you like the, the surprise, right? Suponiendo que te guste la sorpresa. You will be very happy with the surprise. Provided that you like the surprise, right? So you can use it in regular conversation, this expression, provided that. Okay? Meaning, suponiendo que. Okay? All right. This, yes? This is the meaning of wiggle and pitch. Mm, wiggle. Do you know the gelatin? When you see a gelatin and it moves like this, that is wiggling. So that's wiggle. It's that, like shake. Mm -hmm. It's like shake, but shake is voluntary. Wiggle is involuntary. <laughs> wiggle oh. only happens, right? Yeah. There are and sounds like the hip hop songs that this is my money down, wiggle, wiggle, it falls. <laughs> there are I, sounds I like that. that. And yeah. what yeah. about pitch? Which one? In the last. I feel I feel offended, Hamia. We saw this word yesterday in the vocabulary. <laughs> yes, but I don't know. Pitch is when you give possible. It's a possible opportunity for a sale. Mm -hmm. mm. Pitch is a possible possible sale, right? Mm -hmm. When there is an opportunity to make a sale, that's a pitch, right? Okay. Thank you. Very good. Nice. So. What do you think about what we have been reading, guys? What do you think about those tips, pitfalls of online shopping? Basically saying important points of online shopping. They are talking about the shipping prices, inaccurate sizing. For example, if I wear um, size M of a blouse, regular size, but if I buy online, Accurate means exacto, right? Inaccurate, inexacto, okay? So probably the size M online is not the same measures, right? So it might be bigger or smaller, especially if you buy clothes from China, they will be smaller. <laughs> so and, those... and always is different, the, the clothes too. It's, <laughs> it's not what you see in the pictures exactly, sometimes. Right. What can we say about the other topics? Misleading product descriptions or payment issues. What opinion do you have on those topics? Let's see. Well, let's talk about payment issues, for example, right? Have you ever had payment issues when you're buying something online? 
probably that you made a transfer and they didn't receive it or the payment, they say they didn't receive it, but you already have it discounted from your account. Anything like that? Have you ever had any issues, guys? Uh, maybe it could be an issue when I have to pay an extra charge because they they said that uh, they don't know that my 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 stuff was a was a laptop. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was something fragile, right, or delicate. That could be. That's one. Um, also, you know, when some pages they have this streak, they say shipping cost is starting at. They say like this day, right? Shipping cost is starting at, and they announce one price, like a, a specific price. And then when you make the payment, they give you a higher price for the shipping, and they say it's a starting, but your price goes up. And it's like, that's a trick. But it's too late because you already purchased the product, right? So you have to pay the fee for the shipment. What about poor packaging? I don't know who was the one that told me just yesterday or on Monday, like somebody was telling a story that he got some shoes that were scratched. That was my shoes, teacher. Okay. So were they properly packaged when you received them, Jorge? Uh, uh no i definitely not because that was an a, 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 a bag a, a plastic bag oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally totally definitely not exactly okay so bottom line we have to pay attention to all those things when we're going to do our online purchase that's basically what they are telling us in this uh reading very good job guys now we're gonna go with the list so be ready please to say here or present ana raquel villalta present thank you carlos antonio escobar claudia maria melendez present teacher thank you diana elizabeth here teacher thank you jorge humberto vela present teacher Thank you, Jose Jonathan Vigil. Present, Miss. Thank you, Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present, teacher. Thank you, Juan de Dios Mejia. Present, teacher. Thank you, Linda Yvette Marquez. Manuel Antonio Palmo. Maria Concepcion Ceron. Present. Thank you. <laughs> Maria Elena Guadalupe. Present. Thank you. Mario Sorry, Ernesto Villada. <laughs> no, no worries. Mario Ernesto Villada. Other, other students. <laughs> we have an extra student in the class. <laughs> Mario Ernesto <laughs> Villada. Nelson Gavarrete. I'm here, Miss. Thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda. Um, let me check. We haven't seen Norma Villeda or Mario Ernesto Villeda. Did you guys see those right, those people last week? Do you remember if you saw them last week? Nobody remembers. <laughs> Okay, yes, Olga. Yes, Norma, Norma was in the, in, I don't remember, the, the last week she was here, teacher. Okay, well, let's hope that we can see them later on then. Um, Olga Marleni? Mm, present teacher. Thank you. Silvia Suleima Rodriguez? Present teacher. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Present teacher. Thank you, Wendy Maribel of Zabaleta. Present teacher. Thank you, and Christian Natalie. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my, my camera. Oh, oh. oh my God. <laughs> okay, not a problem. So 
this conversation, guys, that we were seeing at the beginning of the class, the conversation that you read, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it back to you before I go to the presentation. This conversation we were reading, um, if you notice, right, in here, in this exercise, it was giving you in present, let's say, right? What kind of questions are these? Are these information questions or are these yes or no questions? What do you think? These three questions are yes or no or information questions? Yes or no questions. Correct, those are yes or no questions. So if you notice in this scenario, in this exercise, the yes or no questions are in simple present, regular tense. But here in the conversation, you find them different, okay? Let's see the first one again. Is the shipping for free? The customer asked if the shipping was for free. This is called reported speech for yes or no questions. Up until yesterday, we were talking about reported speech for imperatives or affirmative sentences, right? We have been speaking about reported speech, affirmative sentences or imperatives. But now we're gonna talk a little bit about reported speech for yes or no questions, okay? They have a little bit of grammar that we wanna check first. So I'm gonna share the presentation with you guys. Just bear with me. And I'll share it. You should be seeing it right now. Let me know if you're seeing the presentation already, please. Yes, teacher. Perfect. Okay, so I reported the speech for yes or no questions specifically. Okay, we're not talking affirmative, we're not talking imperatives, we're talking yes or no questions using the reported speech. Remember, if we're going back to the fundamentals, what is reported the speech is basically you telling in past something that somebody told you. That's it, that's reported speech. There's no science, right? Not, this is not rocket science. Reported speech is you using past tense to report what other person told you, okay? In this scenario, we're going to do the same, but for yes or no questions, we're going to report what other person or people ask, all right? So I need someone to help me read grammar explanation. I need two volunteers. One person will read from the beginning in the two examples, and the other person will read the last portion. Please. Jorge, help me with the beginning and the examples, please. And I need one more volunteer for this last part. Tatiana, please. Okay, grammar explanation. A reported question is when we tell someone what another person asked to do things, we can use direct speech or indirect speech. Direct speech. Do you like working in sales? He asked. Indirect speech. He asked me if I like working in sales. In indirect, yeah. indirect speech, we change the question structure. Example, do you like? to a statement structure. Example, I like. We also often may change to the, to the tenses and other words in the same way as for reported statements. Example, have done, have done today, that day. All right. So I don't know if this happens to you guys, but to me, if I read a grammar explanation, I'm like, like mathematics, right? Like what is sorcery? But then if I see examples, it becomes easier, right? So basically what this rule is telling us, remember yesterday when we were using um, reported speech for imperatives, we were saying uh, he suggested, he advised, he requested, right? To announce, to start reporting what the other person had said. In this case, this rule is telling us for reported speech, yes or no questions, we can, first of all, we have two structures, two versions that we can do, right? Listen to this. Do you like working in sales? He asked. 
This is direct, right? Repeating exactly the words. But then reported the speech is it the, when when you see indirect speech is the same as reported. Okay, reported the speech. He asked me if I liked working in sales, right? So when it's a yes or no question and you're going to report it, you're going to start reporting using the word ask, the verb ask or not. The verb ask is the one you will use to report the question, okay? Will I need to ask me? Will I need to ask his mother or if it's a person, right? Then it's telling you, you see this. If you see, do you like? That tells you that's a yes or no question, right? And then you can change it. This part remains the same for reported speech. If you see a sentence in past, you report it in past. Same thing, right? And we're going to check a little bit more. Okay, so yes or no question and reporting verbs. I need two people to help me read these verbs, please. We will do some exercise in a minute. I need two volunteers to read these two boxes. One person to read yes or no, and the other one to read reporting verbs. Let's see. Wendy, help me read the yes or no questions, please. And Juan, let me uh, help me read the reporting verbs, please. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes or no questions. In yes or no questions, we use if or whether to report the question. Sorry for interference. If is more common. <laughs> interference. Mm -hmm. Continue reading when you post. Are you going to the Hel Helsinki conference? He asked me if I was going to the Helsinki conference. Have you finished finish the project yet? She asked us whether we finished the project yet. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, before Juan reads the next portion, what Wendy is telling us here, we have these two expressions when we're reporting yes or no questions. We can use if or we can use whether. Whether or not, okay? Or whether or, okay? The most common one is if. This is the most common one that we use. Example, the correct, the, the main, the normal sentence, the regular sentence. Are you going to the Helsinki conference? Fulanito asked me if I was going to the Helsinki conference, okay? Agrego el if. He asked me if I was going. If you wanted to use whether, you can say, Fulanito asked me whether I was going to the Helsinki conference. You can use either or. You can use if or you can use whether. That's up to you. But the most commonly one is if, okay? Mm -hmm. Juan de Dios, please. Reporting verbs. Reporting verbs. The most common reporting verb for question is ask. But we can also use verb like inquire, want to know, or wonder. Did you bring your passports? She wanted to know if they brought their passports. When, when could you get this done by? He wondered when we could get done by. All right. So Juan is telling us that the rule that we saw before this slide, it said to start reporting a yes or no question, you introduce it using the verb ask. He asked me if, she asked me whether, okay? You use the verb ask for introducing it, the reporting sentence. But there, there are also these other verbs. You can use he inquired, again, he inquired if this and that. He wanted to know if this or that, okay? He's wondering if this or that, okay? Ask is the most commonly used to start reporting yes or no questions, but it's not the only one. You can also use inquire, want to know, or wonder, 
All right, like the examples that one was reading here. And then we're gonna check this part. Offers, requests, and suggestions. I need a volunteer, please, that someone that didn't read before to read this, this section. Do we need one volunteer for this one? Claudia Melendez, please. Offers, requests, and suggestions. If that question is making an offer, request a suggestion, we can use a specific verb pattern instead. For example, offer plus infinitive, uh, infinitive, as plus infinitive or suggest plus in, ing. Uh -huh. Would you like, <laughs> Would you like me to help you? He offered to help me. Can you hold this for me, please? She asked me to hold it. Why, do, why don't we check with Joel? She, suggest, she, she suggested checking with Joel. Correct. So listen, in this part, when somebody offers you something, but they are, they are offering you by means of a question, right? It's not the same that I say, I want to help you. That's a direct offer. But if I ask you if I can offer you something, that is a different story. If somebody asks you, for example, let's say I say, Tatiana, would you like me to help you? And Tatiana is going to tell somebody else that I offer help to her. She can say, oh, teacher bakery offered to help me. So you can change it to a, from a question to a statement. Okay, and the rule is telling you when you change it to a statement, you can use infinitive, right? Because you have you will have two verbs in that case, offered and help. So you use two to change this to infinitive. Okay. Um, if I ask Claudia, can you hold this? Can you hold this cup for me, Claudia? And Claudia wants to report what I ask her that I offer help, or I ask her for help. She said, the teacher asked me to hold the cup, okay? Again, she's using an infinitive and is making it an affirmative sentence instead of a question. She's reporting it, but using an affirmative sentence. And then the other one, um, let's say I say, Juan, why don't you check your homework with Hood? And Juan can report the question that I asked him. The teacher suggested checking my homework with Hood, okay? You can have, you have two versions. You can report the question as it is, right? Using if or whether, or you can change it to a statement, right? You can change it to a statement. That's up to you guys. You can decide on that. And then here we have some examples, okay? So we have the direct version and then you have the indirect. Remember, indirect is reported speech, okay? So we have one, two, three, four. I need four volunteers. Each of you will read direct and report it. Direct and report it. Okay. So we need four volunteers for this. Um, Tatiana Michelle, help me with the first one, please. The first two. Jorge, the second and the third. Claudia, fourth and fifth. And we need one more person to read the last one. Nelson, please help me with direct and indirect, the last two ones, okay? Let's start, Diana, please. Direct, will, will you do this? Uh, indirect, she asked me if, if I will to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, go ahead. Direct, are you going to the market? Indirect, she asked me if I was going to the market. Thank you. Direct, direct, will you help me? Indirect, she asked me whether, it were, whether I will help her. Thank you. Nelson, are you there? You have to read the last two. Hello. Uh, okay, direct, I have you about a new cell phone. Hmm? Indirect, she wonder, wonder if I have about a new cell phone. Very good, thank you. So in these examples, guys, you can tell what the, what the other is like, the rules in grammar were telling you, right? 
or yes or no questions, when you report them, you're gonna start with the verb ask or wonder or wanted to know. And then you can use if or you can use when. That's what they are telling, right? Now notice something important. Usually when you're reporting something, you change it to past. Why? Why do I change it to past? Because that's the point. You cannot report something from the future, right? You can only report something that is already in the past. So the question doesn't matter in what tense it is. When you are reporting it, you will change it to the, ver to the past version of the original sentence, okay? The past tense of will, would, okay? The past tense of are, in this case, was, right? Same here, will, would, okay? Have you bought? If I had the bought, right? So that's, that's your cue, your, your clues to do that. And now we're gonna do some exercises. But before we move to the exercises, I need to know if you have questions, guys, in this, this grammar that we have seen right now. For yes or no questions, reported speech. Do you have questions? In the silence, I don't know what to think, if it's good or bad. <laughs> I will assume it's good, okay? And if you have questions, you can ask me later on, don't worry. So we have this exercises here, okay? And for these exercises, we're gonna follow the directions. Convert the direct, yes or no questions. The direct are this one, okay? You're going to convert them to report the speech or indirect. And you will use, my, it says, my neighbor, David asked me. So you will start all of the questions with he asked, okay? For example, number one, do you live with your family? He asked me if I lived with my family, okay? Hay dos factores que van a llevar cuando hagan reported the speech de estas oraciones. Number one, van a introducirla con el verbo ask. But you can also use wondered or wanted to know. Si yo puedo decir, he asked me, or he wanted to know if, or he was wo he wondered if, okay? Cualquiera de esas tres opciones. And then the, the, what is it? Conditional if, okay? When you're changing it to report it, all right? So we have 10 in here. I'm gonna give you one moment. I'm gonna check this. All right, here. So let's see, 10. We have 10 in here. I'm gonna give you, it's 9.34. I'm gonna give you 10 minutes so that you can work in the breakout rooms with your classmates and you're gonna change them to report the speech. Those questions that you have there in direct, normal, you will change them to report the speech with your classmates, okay? Let me open the groups and then I will tell you how many you will do per group. We have one, two, three, we have four groups. So we're gonna be doing, yeah, we can do that. We can do two for two each, okay? Room number one, room number one, Juan de Dios and Wendy, you can work on number two and number three, okay? Room number two, Claudia, Jorge and Maria, you can work number four and number five. Room number three, Jonathan and Nelson, you can work number six and number seven. And then Ana, Raquel, Juan Carlos, and Silvia, you can work eight and nine. All right. Room number six, Ana, Juan Carlos, and Silvia, number eight and number nine. I will give you guys, no, 10 minutes, it's too much because you're only gonna do two sentences. So I'm gonna give you six minutes for each, okay? So I am going to open the rooms right now and you will have six minutes to work with your classmates. Remember room number one, two and three, room number two, four and five, room number three, six and seven, and room number six, eight and nine, okay? I will send these questions to the WhatsApp group also, so you can see them over there. The rooms are open right now. It's 9.36, you will have six minutes. 
and you can enter the rooms now. Tatiana, are you going to be able to enter the rooms? And Maria Elena, you are in room number two. Hi, Maria. Maria Elena, you are in Hi. room. Teacher. Hi, uh, you should be in room number two, Maria Elena, yes. right now. Thank you. Let me know. La voy a mover ahorita. Okay. Es la acepta. Gracias. Thank you. Claudia, were you assigned to a group? Do you remember? Number four and five. I don't know. Um, With Jorge. Jorge, Jorge. Oh, okay, I'm gonna move you with Jose Jonathan and Nelson, Nelson Gavarrete on room number three. So you're going to do five and uh, six and seven, okay? You're going to, well, they are working on it. I'm just going to add you so you, if you can help them, okay? Jorge was alone. I don't know. Yeah, now he's with Maria and Tatiana. <laughs> okay. That's why there are three in his group already. So I'll move okay. you with Jose and Nelson, room number three. Okay, teacher. Thank you.
Okay, we should all be back by now. Let me see. Okay, so let's go with room number one. You were doing number two and number three. Let me hear that, please. Teacher, we need yes? more time. It's only two sentences, but no, let me ask the other one. Do you guys need more time also? The, the word, do, we, do you, uh, do yes, we need more time. Share? More time, <laughs> teacher. I don't, I don't want to shame I don't with you guys. Please, I'm gonna please. Give you, no, okay, no, I'm going to give you. Share, share more time. Share again. Work, work. I'm gonna give you five more minutes. The word. Okay, I'm gonna open the rooms. You have five minutes. Guys. Thank you, teacher. I will accept no excuses when we come back. <laughs> no, the the word. Five minutes. Go back to your room, please, please and, miss, and complete this. Can, yes. Miss, can you show the example, please? Oh yeah. Yes. There. Please. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. You can enter the rooms again and you will have five minutes, guys. Los que estaban en las salas tienen que ingresar de nuevo. Tienen cuatro minutos para terminar con sus equipos. No puedo entrar, no me da la opción. Me niego. Ah, déjeme ver. La voy a mover, pero no la acepte todavía, Willy. Yo le voy a avisar cuando. Ahora. And Diana, who are you working with? I don't know. My internet went down. Do you remember who were you working with? No. Um. Hmm. Se me quedé sin antes de, ah, de okay. So in that yeah. case, you just you can just stay there, Diana. It's gonna be four more minutes when they return. So when okay. they return, we can continue working. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, we are just gonna wait 25 more seconds before everyone returns to the session. Okay, now that we're back, we're going to read room number one. Sentences number two and number three, please. Juan de Dios, Maria Concepcion, and Wendy Maribel. Okay. Um, together. Um, there are the, the number, it is the number two. I, uh, I asked if I borrowed your lawn mower. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, vamos a cambiar un par de cosillas. Como dice que mi vecino, David, me pregunta a mí, todas las preguntas iban a iniciar con he asked me. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. ¿cómo lo pondría? Veamos. Eh... He asked, mm -hmm. he asked mm -hmm. me if I borrow your, I borrow ¿Cuál es el my pasado de Ken? mower. El pasado de Ken? Could. Mm -hmm. Could. If I could borrow. Uh -huh. If could I could borrow. borrow. Y como estamos hablando que él me preguntó que si se lo podía prestar a él. If I could borrow him. My, uh, sorry, your lawn mower. Lawn mower. Mm -hmm. Like that. He asked, mm -hmm. he asked me if I could borrow him your lawn mover. Oh, no, sorry, my, my lawn mover. Mm -hmm. He asked me if I could, bo if I could borrow him my lawn mover. mower. Mower, sorry, it's not mover, it's mower. La podadora. Lawn mower la podadora. Okay, la máquina de podar. Number three, veamos. He asked me mm -hmm. if I spoke Spanish. Yes, correct. Spanish, very good. Number four and number five, room number two, please. Jorge and Maria Elena. I'm sure there was one person with you guys, but I don't remember who was it. He asked me if I would came to him house warming party tomorrow. If I what? I would mm -hmm. come come to, mm -hmm. to him house warming party tomorrow. Warming party mm. tomorrow. Cuando él le preguntó era tomorrow, pero como ya pasó, usted lo está narrando, sería yeah. al día siguiente. Me preguntó si iba a ir a su fiesta al día siguiente. Eso sería uh, the next that, day. The next day, o uh -huh. that day. Ajá, uh -huh. that day puede ser también. Aunque ahí no se entendería, sería the next day. Uh -huh. The next day, like that. Pero uh -huh. todo el contexto, it was perfect, yes. Number five, please. Uh, he wanted to know, or he mm -hmm. asked me mm -hmm. if I had, I had mm -hmm. seen Correct. a car. His car. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Correct. Very good. Nice. You got it, guys. Number six and number seven. Claudia, Jose, or Nelson, please. Okay. Okay. Did you? He asked me if that was my cut. Yes. All right. And number seven. He asked me if I could help him 
to fix his fences. Could it help him to fix his fences? Correct. Number eight and number nine. Very good job. Room number three. You did it correct. Number eight and number nine. Ana, Raquel, Juan Carlos, or Silvia. Yes. Um, he asked me if I listened to him. If I listened or if I was listening, Ana. Oh. Porque como es, are you listening? If I was listening, right? Mm -hmm. The past tense of the verb to be sería was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to him, right? He asked if I was listening to him. And number nine? Um, he asked me mm -hmm. if, if he could talk to me for a minute. Correct. Very good, guys. Yes. And then the last one we had, right? Number 10, that was not assigned. But if anyone wants to try it, we start the same way. He asked me if I was a brainer. Mm -hmm. If I was a brainer, okay. Now we submit and we're gonna check. And this one, this is the way they want it. They are correct, but this thing, it wants it like that, all right? So he asked me if I lived with my family. He asked me if he could borrow my lawnmower. They are exactly the way we did them, right? Ahí las puso, las puso como cero porque no, no las inicié con mayúscula todas. <laughs> That's why I did it, but they are correct, all right? So look at that, no le puso mayúscula ninguna. <laughs> because I am I am like that. <laughs> All right. So we're not, we're gonna finish the class with this. I noticed that you got really fast this topic, guys. So none of you were having issues or nobody was like not understanding. So that's good news. So we're gonna pass the assistance right now before we leave. Be ready to say here or present. Now, before we do this, remember, um, tomorrow is off because it's Independence Day. And then for Friday, the only communication that I have from the academy, it says, give me a minute. Oh yeah, it says, ante el reciente comunicado se les informa que por el momento esperaremos indicaciones de la gerencia de Insafor, okay? So Inglés Corporativo is going to wait for Insa Forbes instructions regarding Friday, but we will let you know, guys, through WhatsApp, okay? So don't get your hopes up <laughs> for Friday. Um, let's go. Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Present. Thank you, Jorge Humberto. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jose Jonathan. Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Present, Miss Jonathan. Thank you, uh, Jose Jonathan. Okay, thank you. Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present. Thank you, Juan de Dios. Present, teacher. Thank you, Linda Yvette Marquez, Manuel Antonio, Maria Concepcion. Present. Thank you, Maria Elena. Maria Elena. Nelson Gavarrete. I'm here, Miss. Thank you, Nelson. Give me one moment. Okay. Norma Carolina. Olga Marleni, Silvia Suleima. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, give me a moment. ¿Quién se quedó ayer? Um, was it Linda? No. Manuel Antonio, yes. Maria Concepción was yesterday. Maria Elena was yesterday. Mario Ernesto. Mario ya se fue. 
Mario Ernesto Villeda ya se fue. Nelson, have you disconnected already? Okay, we're just gonna finish then. Um, Tatiana Michelle Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Silvia, si se puede quedar 10 minutos, me avisa, por favor. If you can stay, Silvia, for 10 minutes. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta. Present, teacher. Thank you. And Christian Natalie. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the homework, the two. Uh, we can check it. Um, okay. Lo podemos chequear por WhatsApp, Wendy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will help you on WhatsApp. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Everybody else, you can have a good night. Enjoy your day off. Don't drink and drive, people. Bye. 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 Have a good day tomorrow. Take care. Be safe. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Juan. Okay. Hi, Silvia. How are you? Hi, teacher. Uh, fine. Perfect. Ok, Silvia, esos 10 minutos realmente los podemos hacer en español porque eso lo usé yo. Um, realmente es para que usted me diga si hay algún tema que quiere que reforcemos, que quiere practicarlo más o que lo explique de nuevo. Ah, el tema de, de cuándo usar el talk en el speak, en speak. ¿El talk o el talk? Talk en speak. Talk en speak. Um, me está hablando de siempre de reported ah. speech, Silvia. Ajá, uh -huh. sí. Okay, Creo que, que se lo puse en unas diapositivas. Uh -huh, ya le digo. Quiero ver dónde está. Aquí está. Solo la voy a cargar para mostrarse. Okay. Se lo voy a compartir. Esta era, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Sí. Ok. So, vamos a ir acá a lo, a lo primero, Silvia. Y mm -hmm. vamos, me ayuda leyendo esta parte. Ok. Indirect speech. Reported on indirect speech is usually used to talk, talk about the past. So we normally change to tense of the world. Spoken. We use reporting verbs like say, tell, ask, and we may use the word that to introduce the reported word. Words. Invert commas are not used. Uh -huh. Ok, so, tengamos en claro primero, eh, Silvia, que in the, para el indirect o reported, que es lo mismo para reported speech, Usualmente le vamos a hacer en el pasado porque estamos reportando, estamos contando algo que alguien nos dijo. ¿Ok? Ah, como, no okay. Lo estoy como no lo estoy repitiendo literal, voy a hablar en pasado. Por ejemplo, si usted me pregunta, Miss, ¿usted ya comió? Cuando yo le cuente a alguien más, cuando yo le reporte, yo voy a decir, fíjese que Silvia me preguntó si yo ya había comido. ¿Ok? Yo se lo estoy contando a otra persona en pasado porque ya sucedió, ya, ya quedó atrás, ¿ok? Aunque okay. usted me haya preguntado en presente, entonces, mi eso se había comido. Y yo, fíjate que Silvia me preguntó si yo ya había comido, ¿ok? Por eso es que el reported speech se trabaja así, porque estamos contando 
que algo que ya nos preguntaron, independientemente de qué tiempo haya sido. ¿sí? ¿Okay? Okay. Tomando, uh -huh. tomando eso en base, para las oraciones afirmativas o los imperatives cuando se dan órdenes o sugerencias, acá tenemos un ejemplo. She said I saw him. Ella dijo, yo lo vi. ¿Okay? Cuando yo lo cuente, yo voy a decir, ella dijo que ella lo había visto. Yo empiezo mi report diciendo, ella dijo, she said that she had seen him. ¿Ok? Esa es como una forma en con la que yo puedo empezar a reportar. Ella dijo tal y tal, que tal y tal cosa había pasado. ¿Ok? She said. Esa es una de mis opciones. Y me dice primero, para say and tell. Yo voy a ocupar say cuando no hay un sujeto después del verbo. Ella dijo que estaba cansada. She said that she was tired. Y voy a ocupar tell cuando hay un sujeto después del verbo. Por ejemplo, he told me that he was tired. Él me dijo a mí que estaba cansado. ¿Okay? La diferencia entre say y tell, say es decir al azar, sin nadie en específico. Tell, siempre se ocupa tell someone else. Tell, o sea, someone puede cambiar. Tell me, tell your mother, tell your father. ¿Okay? El tell uh -huh. siempre es dirigido a alguien más. Y ahora con talk and speak, nos dice entonces, usamos estos verbos para describir la acción de comunicar, ¿ok? Si usted va a reportar que alguien habló de un tema, usted puede utilizar talk o puede utilizar speak, ¿ok? En vez de decir, she said, dicen that, usted va a decir, she talked about, si sí, yo le voy a decir, um, ella habla de medicina, ¿ok? Ella está hablando de medicina ahorita. Y yo le voy a contar a usted. Yo le voy a decir, Silvia, fíjese que ella habló de medicina, ¿ok? Entonces, ese habló sería, she talked about medicine, ¿ok? Lo único que me está diciendo es que para empezar a contarle a usted, voy a decir que talk, el verbo talk. She talked about medicine, ¿ok? Y luego, speaking. Exactamente lo mismo. Yo puedo decirle, she talked, she spoke, or she was speaking, cualquiera de she spoke about medicine in the conference. She spoke about medicine in the conference. Entonces, lo único que me está diciendo esta regla es que cuando yo voy a contar que alguien más habló o platicó de un tema, ocupo eso, to, cualquiera, talk o speak, para decir que se habló de algo. ¿Ok? En vez de decir say, ¿verdad? Yo no uh -huh. puedo decir... En la conferencia, ella habló de medicina. Yo no lo puedo reportar con el verbo say. Yo no puedo decir, in the conference, she said about medicine. No hace sentido, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Entonces, tiene que ser talk o speak. She spoke about medicine o she talked about medicine. A menos que, por ejemplo, siempre dentro de la misma conferencia que se habló de medicina, hubiera algo que se repita literal, por ejemplo. Exacto. Pudiera usar el say. Uh -huh. She, ella okay. dijo que la medicina era importante. She said that the medicine was important. Uh -huh. Exacto. Okay. Claro, usted lo captó tal, tal cual debe ser. Okay. ok. So, I don't know if that's clear now. Siente que yes. sí. Ok. Sí, sí. Perfect. Gracias. Um, de igual modo, Silvia, siempre que hay algún tema, usted me puede dejar saber, ya sea en la clase, así como hizo Wendy ahora, que pidió ayuda con la tarea. Igual, si usted tiene algún tema o algo, siempre me puede dejar saber de acuerdo. Ok. okay. Y si gracias. no, en todo caso, ahí estoy a la orden en WhatsApp también, ya sea en el grupo o me puede escribir directamente. Ok. Así okay. que eso sería Muchas todo gracias. para la asesoría. Silvia, cuídese, descanse y feliz Día de la Independencia. Mañana, cuídese. Gracias, Iván. Bye, bye.